Hello, today we're going to be talking about motion graphs, graphs of displacement, graphs of velocity and graphs of acceleration which you may not have met before. Uh, specifically we're going to be talking about how rates of change are represented on motion graphs and how those graphs for the same motion, so the graph of displacement and the graph of velocity for example for the same motion fit together and how they relate to each other. Okay, so let's get started. Um, firstly we're going to talk about gradients because on a graph the rate of change is shown by the gradient. So the gradient is the rate of change and that's a really important concept to understand right from the beginning. So when you're looking at a graph, if you measure the gradient, you can measure the rate of change. Okay, so just a quick recap about gradients. The gradient is calculated by the change in the y variable divided by the change in the x variable. In other words, the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 okay which you may have seen at GCSE maths alternatively we can say in more physics-y language uh, oops, sorry no that's the wrong one um, we can say delta x sorry I didn't really do it again delta y divided by delta x the change in y divided by the change in x Okay, so those are different ways of representing the gradient, but in all effects, it's the change in the y variable divided by the change in the x variable. Okay, so that's a little bit of theory about gradients. Now let's have a look at how they work on a graph. Okay, now here we've got a displacement against time graph, and we can draw some lines on that one. Okay, so we've got a line like that, uh, possibly followed by a line like that, possibly again followed by whoops, a line like that. So I'm just actually going to get rid of that one because I did two by mistake a line upwards like that. Okay, so if we try and describe this motion, which is effectively what you've had to do previously, we can say that because it's a displacement graph, the, the object is moving at a constant velocity in this first section, and then it's stationary in this section, and then it's moving in the same direction at a smaller constant velocity. It's going slower, and we know that because the gradient is less steep. Okay, so but the gradient here is represented by the velocity. In fact, the gradient is the velocity. And because if we look at this one, um, the gradient um, is the change in the y variable divided by the change in the x variable. Now, the y variable is displacement and the x variable is time. Displacement over time gives velocity. So the gradient is equal to the velocity. So by calculating the gradient, we can calculate the velocity because it's the same thing, they're equal. Okay, so here as we can see the gradient is zero because it's a flat line and therefore the velocity is zero which is why it's stationary and here the gradient is smaller, the change in the y variable is less for the same change in the x variable and therefore the gradient is smaller and therefore the velocity is slower. Okay, so that's how it works on a, on a velocity graph because the rate of change of displacement is velocity and therefore the gradient is also velocity. Okay, let's go over here for a minute and have a look at what's going on over here. Let's draw some different lines on this one. We can have a line like that, and then we can have a line like that, and then perhaps for a change we could have a line coming back down. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so let's have a look at what's happening in this graph. We have, um, this is a velocity time graph. So not a displacement time graph, it's a completely different type of graph. So here we see the velocity increasing up until this point, and at that point the velocity stays constant, and then here in this final section the velocity decreases back to zero. Okay, so how, what does the gradient relate to then? So in terms of a velocity time graph, the gradient is the acceleration, because the definition of acceleration says that the rate of change of velocity is equal to the acceleration. And because the rate of change is the gradient, the gradient of a velocity time graph is also equal to the acceleration. So the value of this gradient here represents the acceleration. All right, so if we do the same here as we did before, delta y divided by delta x is equal to the gradient, but that's also equal to the change of velocity divided by the change in time. Velocity divided by time, as you know from GCSE, is equal to acceleration. So the gradient here is actually equal to acceleration.
Okay, so here we've got a constant rate of acceleration, which is why it's speeding up. Here we've got zero acceleration because there's zero gradient, which is why it stays at the same speed. And here we have a negative acceleration, which is commonly known as a deceleration, and that's the object reducing its velocity, slowing down to zero. Okay, here's a question. Um, let's just get rid of this a minute because I want to use this, this side of the graph. If what happens to the motion if the object keeps going this way? Okay, below the axis. So this gradient, we'll assume this gradient is constant all the way through that motion. What's happening to the object here? Okay, and the answer to that is by looking at the gradient. Okay, so the gradient of this stays exactly the same. So the acceleration is the same. But we have to remember that the velocity is a vector. All right, so these are positive velocities and these are negative velocities. So if there's a positive velocity, the object is moving in one direction. And if there's a negative velocity, that means, that means the object is moving in the opposite direction. So as soon as the object crosses this axis, all right, as soon as that line hits the axis, hits zero and starts going down here, what's effectively happening is the velocity is increasing but becoming more negative. So it's becoming more negative and therefore it's speeding up in the opposite direction. So when a velocity time line crosses the axis, it means the object has changed direction and started to accelerate in the opposite direction. So here we've got a slowing down, zero velocity there, obviously that's zero on the axis, zero velocity, the object has stopped. So whenever you see a velocity time graph hitting the x-axis, you know that the object has stopped. And here we've got an acceleration but in the opposite direction. Acceleration is the same. The object hasn't stopped accelerating, it's just stopped moving during that acceleration at that point because it was slowing down here and now it's speeding up here. And this might be the case where, let's say, let's ignore that bit and just talk about this as a separate graph. This might be the case where you're actually throwing a ball in the air or something like that. It starts off at a high velocity because you've just thrown it. It slows down as it goes up. At this point here it stops in the air and it accelerates downwards in the opposite direction as it comes back to your hand. Okay, so that's how the gradients work on uh, on velocity graphs. Okay, the gradient is the same thing as the acceleration, and it is shown by calculating the gradient here. Okay.